Bex, we're three wins from four. Clean sheet on Tuesday. Just what's the mood like around the place at the moment? Yeah, nice, no, positive, positive. Um, I guess since the turn of the year, we've hit a good run of form, and um, obviously we're in touch and distance of the playoffs. So I guess everyone's optimistic, hopeful. Maybe a little bit disappointed off the other two games, um, be it Barnsley, be it Burton. But I think to turn it round and you know get results at Oxford away, get results against uh, Blackpool, who you know absolutely smash uh, Bolton four one. Um, I think it's just showing of what we're capable of. So it's just got to, we've got to maintain that and hopefully see where we end up at the end of the season. But yeah, positive. What's been the key to that? Because I think performance in, performances in the first half of the season were good as well, but we maybe didn't get the points that we deserved. Now we are getting those points. So what's been, what's been the difference, do you think? A culmination of things. Like It's hard to put your hand on what it is specifically. We've had injuries, which hasn't been great. We've still got injuries now. Um, we were playing a completely different formation. Sometimes people don't factor in. We played one formation the whole of last season, and we started doing a different formation, which was to, you know, adjust to the level. Um, but I think we kind of went back to what we are really, and we've just gone with that intensity. We've gone with the right formation, um, and I think obviously the lads that have came in, I think it's just timing. Lads getting used to the level, you know, physically, my body weren't in the best of shape, and and, and so many others weren't in good nick at the time. So I just think there's a culmination of things that have concluded why it probably wasn't the way it was. But we showed glimpses of what we're capable of, you know, but good performances, but maybe not turning it around with that edge and, and getting a result. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's just timing more than anything. It's a shame because obviously we'd like to think if we were able to start in that manner, we would, we're, God knows where we would be right now. But um, but look, you know what, it's a, it's a great opportunity nonetheless. And um, yeah, we're going to try our best to make the most of what's left of the season. You're one of the experienced heads in what is quite a young squad. How much pleasure is it giving you seeing these players grow and develop over the course of the season so far? Nah, yes, it's unreal to be honest. They've been like a duck to water, all of them. You know, Shaq, who's been unbelievable, um, his first kind of loan into the league. Oli O'Neill, who's like, yeah, you know I mean, uh, completely surprised me in 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 just how how effortless it's kind of looked for him, just seamlessly like sliding in. Like you know, he's only just signed for us. Um, so the quick turnaround of him just slotting in and, and, and really contributing, it's been incredible. Um, and let's not forget as well, there's a lot of these lads that are like playing their first season at this level as well. You know, Brownie's kind of a bit of a real kind of breakthrough season for him. Um, and uh, Gal Braith is just such a player. There's, there's so many young lads, you can just, you're at the picking of like, you know, how, how good they are. So, um, so yeah, look, it's, it's really positive to see how they've slotted in. Um, and, and you know what, they, um, they've got bright futures, I guess, they've just continued to maintain that focus, that consistency, continue to apply themselves. Sky's the limit, honestly, for them. So, so buzzing for the, how, they, how things have gone for them. And um, with the right mindset, you know, honestly, they could end up at the top level, yeah. If you are able to generalise it, what kinds of sort of nuggets of information have you passed on to the younger lads throughout the season? I guess, look, I, I, I guess um, you want to encourage more than anything. You're doing a lot of encouraging to make sure that they're full of confidence and buzzing and, and looking forward to the next game and just free to express themselves. But ultimately, uh, you know what? Because things have really worked for them, the goals and so on and so forth, that bravery is hard to kind of instill in players. You just kind of have it or you don't. And um, that, that I think that's what we have, at the, especially at the top of the pitch and even the likes of like Kayon when he, when he came in. Just there's this level of bravery and confidence, not an arrogance, but a real confidence that they have. Um, more than anything, it'll be just making sure that they're on it, I mean, between games and not getting complacent um, and just letting them know game by game, continue to build. You're not as good as your last game. You're only good as your next game, in all honesty. So I try and tell them, you know what, don't, don't get carried away with that. Don't get carried away if you scored two or you scored one then, do you know what I mean, or you scored three and four or whatever, go again. So, um, so yeah, I just try my best to encourage them as best as possible. Um, and if I need to, like you know, have a go and shout at them, then I, I will. Which I mean, if needs be, but um, but nah, they're a good bunch of lads, and, and I think it's that bravery that they have in um, deep inside themselves that um, is is a really good ingredient to take them further. Since Tuesday, we've signed Jack Simpson on an initial short-term contract. I know you had some discussions with him before the decision was made by the club to sign Jack. How? important was that for you as as one of the spokespeople of our dressing room and also as the PFA chairman as well? Yeah, I guess, look, he's, first things first, I'm, I'm delighted that he's he's come and joined us at the club. Um, reason being, um, I believe that everyone deserves a second chance. You know, he's, he's firstly um, gone through his process, 
you know, has to serve a ban and, and is remorseful for what, what took place. Um, but I think we're living in a time in society where it's like, it's cancel culture. It's like, you know, you can't, you're not allowed to come back. Do you know what I mean? The, your, your, your reputation's completely tarnished and, do you know, there's no, there's no rehabilitation. There's no way you can be integrated back into society or back into a team. Um, and, it, you know, just hearing his journey and what he's had to go through, you know, being out of football for such a long period of time. And this just painted a real picture, a reality for him. And I think, you know what, like, it, don't get me wrong, what he, what happened, the, what took place in the heat of the moment was wrong, do you know what I mean? And something that he regrets. But um, but I think it's, I think everyone deserves a second chance. And I'm, I'm glad that we as a club um, have given him the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm a strong believer in that. So, um, so yeah, I'm delighted to have him here. He's a good player, he looks a really good player in training. So I think he's a good addition, a good contribution to the team that will only drive standards. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's my perspective on it, yeah. Looking forward to Saturday now. It's going to conclude what's been a, a hectic month, oh, no, although we are into March now. What kind of challenge are we going to get off of Bristol Rovers, do you think? Look, they've got, they got a good bunch of lads that are experienced. Um, they know the level. Um, they've played a lot higher, some of the lads. Um, they're a really competitive team. Um, I think they've been chopping and changing their formation. So there's not real clarity what their game plan will look like, but you know that their game, they're going to be a physical side. Um, they've got real ability in, in, in their team that can turn a game on its head, be it a shot from the edge of the box or a bit of indiv individual brilliance. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be an easy game, to say the least. Um, I think with our intensity, if we can maintain those standards, I think we've got a good chance, a good chance to really put them on the back foot. Um, and yeah, just continue to build on the performances that we've, we've we've put forward recently so so yeah it's not going to be an easy easy game to say the least um, probably one of our toughest games so um, but yeah I think it's still nonetheless a really good opportunity if we can maintain those standards that we can get another three points on the board. Given how busy our schedule has been in recent weeks how important can the fans be in giving us that extra bit of encouragement when we are maybe feeling it towards the end of the game? No massive massive you need it man you need it I think like you know, if it's if it's flat and you're not hearing anything, and it's you know, I guess sometimes maybe they're waiting for something to happen. But it, honestly, like I think I, I watched the Carabao Cup final and see the Liverpool fans, and it's the 12th man. It's genuinely the 12th man. And honestly, I I, I I truly believe that when fans get behind the players, it's a massive, massive difference. So so yeah, we want them to be as loud as possible. We want them to sing their hearts out because they actually contribute so much to us, being motivated and want to do more and run harder and. Do you know what I mean play faster and so yeah I guess I, I, it's, it's for them to you know I guess football fans are not just spe spectators they're actual participants in this whole process and it's for them to participate and give their all as much as we can give our all so um so yeah man um uh, we'll do our best to get them going but hopefully God willing they'll be they'll be willing to sing their hearts out and get us going so if we can do that for each other I'm sure we're going to be in a good position